In this lecture we will see how to calculate the average value of continuous time signals and once we are done with the explanation part we will solve two questions based on it. In the last lecture we saw how to calculate the area of continuous time signals and we will use it in this lecture also. The average value of continuous time signals is given as total area total area over the total time the total time this is the formula for the calculation of average of a continuous time signal but we are not very comfortable using this form of the formula we want to simplify it so that we can use it in the examinations without any confusion so I will simplify this formula and for periodic signals the formula will be different and for non periodic signals the formula will be different so first I will explain how to obtain the formula for the periodic signals and then we will see the formula for the non periodic signals the average is equal to total area over the total time and we can obtain the area by integrating this signal let's say the signal is xt and it is periodic with respect to time and now the important thing is the range of integration and for this I will take one example I will take one example this is signal xt and as you can see it is periodic the area of this triangle here is equal to a and if you see the waveform you will find this triangle is the repeated structure so this time period here is the fundamental time period t0 so if you integrate signal xt from 0 to t0 you will find area a but as you already know to find out the total area we integrate from minus infinity to infinity but in case of periodic signals there is no need to integrate from minus infinity to infinity I will explain by the help of this example when we integrated signal xt from 0 to t0 we got a as the area and let's say now we are integrating from 0 to 2t this period here is t0 so this period is equal to twice of t0 and this time we are integrating from 0 to twice of t0 and in that way we have two triangles so integration xt with respect to t will be twice of area a and uh, if you find the average in both the cases then average is equal to the area which is a over the total time the total time is t0 so this is the average in this case if you find the average if you find the average it is equal to twice of a over twice of t0 this is the total area and this is the total time 2 and 2 will cancel out and eventually we have the same average value so a over t0 is the average value in both the cases and if you integrate from minus infinity to infinity you will get the same result you will get a over t0 so in case of periodic signals there is no need to integrate from minus infinity to infinity but you can integrate over the fundamental period so I will write down t0 here and this shows that the lower limit and the upper limit is having the difference equal to t0 so this is the area of the periodic signal we are having and now we will divide this area by the total time so that we have the average value the total time is equal to t0 so I will multiply 1 by t0 and this is the formula of the average value of continuous time signal if this signal if this signal is periodic I hope you understand how we obtain this formula now we will move to the formula for average value when the signal is non periodic I will first write down the formula then I will explain different terms limit t tends to infinity 1 over t integration minus t by 2 to t by 2 signal xt dt and this is for non periodic signals now let's try to understand what are the different terms involved in this formula the time t here the time t here is not the period this is not the period this is the first confusion you will have when you see this formula for the non periodic signals 
and as we are talking about the non periodic signals there is no concept of period the period is undefined for the non periodic signals so this time t cannot be the period it is simply the time and the limit t tends to infinity because we integrate the signal xt from minus infinity to infinity in case of periodic signals there was no need to integrate from minus infinity to infinity because we saw the average will remain the same but in case of non periodic signals this will not happen so we are required to integrate from minus infinity to infinity to calculate the total area right now you will ask me why we are taking the limit as minus t by 2 to t by 2 i will explain you the first thing is to integrate from minus infinity to infinity and for this let's say we are integrating from 0 to t in this case also the total time will remain t t minus 0 is t so 1 by t and limit t tends to infinity x t dt i have written the formula for average the formula for average of non periodic signals in this way and as t is tending to infinity what will happen to the limits this t here this t here will become infinity and this zero will remain zero so you can see the range of the integration it is from zero to infinity what about minus infinity to zero we are not integrating the signal xt from minus infinity to infinity so we don't have the total area we have the area only from zero to infinity the area of the left hand side of the waveform is not included when you write the limit as 0 to t but in case of minus t by 2 to t by 2 the integration will be minus infinity when t is tending to infinity and t by 2 will become infinity so you can see the range it is from minus infinity to infinity and in this way we are integrating signal xt from minus infinity to infinity and we will have the total area as you can see in the formula we need the total area and the total time will remain the same it will be time t now i think the two formulas are clear to you and there is one more thing regarding the average value we call average value as dc value so if in some question you see dc value it is the average value of the signal now let's solve the two problems related to the concepts we have learned till now in the first problem the signal is x1t and in the second problem signal is x2t and as you can see signal x1t is periodic signal whenever you go for the calculation of average value of continuous time signals always look for periodicity and why you need to look for the periodicity because you are required to use the formulas and the formulas are different so we will first check for the periodicity signal x1t is having this repeated structure and the fundamental time period is this one from here to here and this one here is the t naught by 2 this is the origin the signal is periodic with this fundamental time period and now we will use the formula to calculate the average value of the signal it is equal to 1 by t naught integration t naught x t dt there is no need to perform the integration because we can calculate the area directly we performed this integration to find out the area in one fundamental time period this is the area and if you see the signal in one fundamental time period you will find from 0 to t naught by 2 the signal is rectangular and we know how to calculate the area of a rectangle and from t naught by 2 to t naught the signal is equal to 0 so the area is equal to a naught this is a naught here multiplied with t naught over 2 this is the height and this is the width so height into width is the area of rectangle and it is equal to a naught t naught by 2 so we have area as a naught t naught by 2 and the total time is equal to t naught so we will divide the total area by total time to get the average of the signal and when you simplify it you will get a naught by 2 so this is the answer and now we will solve the second problem the second problem is the case of non-periodic signal 
there is no particular structure repeated infinite times and because of this this is the case of non periodic signals x2t is non periodic and in case of non periodic signals you already know the formula for the calculation of average it is limit t tends to infinity where t is the time not the time period minus t by 2 to t by 2 xt dt signal xt is equal to a naught from 0 to infinity and it is equal to 0 from minus infinity to 0 now I will explain you one thing which is very important regarding the calculation of average whenever you have the non periodic signals you need to set minus t by 2 and t by 2 and we set minus t by 2 and t by 2 based on the amplitude transitions here the amplitude is equal to 0 and here the amplitude is equal to a naught so there is transition of amplitude at t equal to 0 so we will include this transition between minus t by 2 and t by 2 so let's take minus t by 2 here and t by 2 here this is minus t by 2 and this one here is t by 2 in this way we have the transition of amplitude included in the range of integration now let's see how we can solve this question limit t tends to infinity 1 by t from minus t by 2 to 0 signal x to t is equal to 0 so integration from minus t by 2 to 0 signal is 0 plus from 0 to t by 2 signal is equal to a naught a naught dt now perform the integration you will get a naught t and the lower limit is 0 the upper limit is t by 2 this integration will become 0 and when you integrate a naught with respect to time t you will get a naught t the lower limit was 0 the upper limit was t by 2 so let's solve it further limit t tends to infinity 1 by t and this will become a naught t by 2 a naught t by 2 t and t will cancel out so we have a naught by 2 as the answer as there was no t in the final result t tends to infinity is not important for us so the final answer is a naught by 2 i hope this lecture is now clear to you we saw how to calculate the average value of continuous time signals in the coming presentations we will solve few more problems based on the average value calculation